So you're a couple of months into your saltwater aquarium setup and everything in your tank is starting to turn brown. What is that? And what do you need to do about it, if anything? Hey, I'm Logan from Reef Rookies, where I help you demystify saltwater aquaria and take some of the vitriol out of the reef keeping community. We'd love to have you over there. So this brown stuff that's starting to show up in your sand bed and on your rocks and glass and stuff, these are diatoms. They're a single celled algae organism that primarily consumes silicates and phosphates that have found themselves in excess in your reef tank. Over the years, reef keepers in the community have dubbed this the ugly phase. And really it's something that you need to let the tank go through with its natural processes and come out the other end stronger and better. But if it gets really bad, you might have to take a little bit of action to help alleviate it a little bit. So in order for us to understand what we need to do about it, first we need to understand where it comes from. So there's lots of sources, but here are a couple of ideas for you to get your brain thinking about where this might be coming from. Tap water is one of the worst things you can put in a saltwater aquarium. Unless it's really clean tap water, which is not generally the case, sometimes it can be, but it's not usually, it's gonna cause you problems. It's high in all kinds of stuff. As a matter of fact, I tested my tap water the other day and my TDS, my total dissolved solids in my water is over 400. You don't want that. We want to have TDS of our water that we're using in our tank before we put salt in it down around zero or one or two. Another place that it can come from is if you're getting water from your local fish store and their reservoir tanks that they've had set up for sometimes even decades aren't being cleaned regularly. There can be things inside those tanks that have built up over the years of things just being normal in those tanks. And now you have a problem and maybe they don't test them regularly or whatever. And you're getting water from the fish store that is technically no good. It can happen. It happens all the time. And it's not a slam against fish stores. It's just something that tends to get overlooked sometimes. So test that water that you're getting from your fish store and check it just to see what it looks like. Another place it comes from is by overfeeding the tank or feeding the tank more than can be consumed. That breakdown in that food material is going to end up creating a nutrient spike in the tank and you end up with a worse diatom bloom than you would normally. And finally, one of the most aggravating places that it can come from is your brand new bucket of salt. Salt in the bucket or in the bag can be high in silicates and phosphates and other things as well. So when you make a new batch of salt water, you always want to test that new batch of salt water just to see how things look. So now that we know that, what do we need to do about it? Well, in most cases, I would say don't do anything. Let the tank go through its natural processes and come out the other end. The diatoms should eventually go away on their own. The tank will become clear. A state of equilibrium will eventually be attained whereby the silicates and phosphates and nitrates and all that are in balance with the bacteria that use them and eat them. And the tank looks pretty much clear. But if that's not the case for you, if this is really bad, here's what you can do. Just like I was saying earlier, the problem is because we're importing these nutrients in some way from some source, we need to export those nutrients just as fast or faster than we're putting in. So you're going to have to ramp up your water changes. You can scrub the rocks and stir the sand around a little bit, clean the glass, and then do a water change to get that stuff out of there. If you have a skimmer, you can skim a little wetter, which means your skim is going to be a little lighter in color, but it's going to pull more water out with it. Effectively doing mini water changes every time you dump that skimmer cup and top off the tank with some new water. If you have a canister filter, you're going to be wanting to clean that thing a little bit more. Or if your filters have filter media in them, or if you're running filter socks or filter pads down in a sump or anything like that, you want to be taking them out and cleaning them a little more regularly. The main point here is that you want to get more nutrients out of the tank. Another thing that can help you along that way is adding more good bacteria and microorganisms into the tank so that they can consume some of those nutrients that the diatoms are using. So you can add copepods into the tank and you can add additional denitrification bacteria. There's tons of products on the market that fall into that category, but adding those into the tank kind of gives you an excess of those good bacteria and organisms and then they fight with the diatoms over the available nutrients and if the population of good stuff is bigger than the population of the stuff we don't want 
eventually the population of the diatoms is going to dwindle because there's not enough food to go around. And so that's the basic idea of what happens during the ugly phase. The best thing to do is just to let it go through till the end. But if you need to do something, now you know what to do.